Uh, welcome to Tidbits About Knits here on my channel, uh, Will and Word. My name is Susie. You can find me on Instagram under the username Tidknit. Um, I'm here back on my channel after a long time away because I wanted a little space to talk about my Pinguono, which I just recently finished. Um, and I love the garment and I could just go on and on and on about it. Um, and it's a really interesting garment with lots to talk about. Um, so I wanted to come here and talk about it. The other reason I wanted to do this video is because while I was knitting the Pinguono, um, it's a lot of garter stitch, so I wanted to watch some uh, YouTube videos of other people's experiences knitting the Pinguono. And um, because it's a really big garment, there wasn't nearly enough videos to get me through the garment, so I figured I would just um, add to the wealth of Pinguono videos already uh, available on YouTube. Um, hoping that maybe uh, it'll inspire some future Pinguono knitters. I'm a total Pinguono pusher now. Um, it's a beautiful garment and uh, I think it's really versatile, um, even though it's a very grand garment, as Stephen West might say. Um, yeah, uh, on that note, um, I am going to insert some footage towards the end of the video of me wearing the Pinguono with different outfits um, so that you can get a sense of you know, how it might look in real life uh, away from the context of like yarn festivals, which I think is where most people end up limiting their penguino usage to. It is pretty crazy. Um, I have worn it out a couple of times and um, have wondered if people think I'm some kind of <laughs> crazy color person, um, which I am. But uh, I find it really fun to wear. Um, and uh, like I said, it's really versatile in a surprising kind of way. So stay tuned for the footage later on. Um, for now, I'll start off by telling you a little bit about the construction of the garment in case you're still on the fence about whether or not you want to do it and uh, maybe hearing about it will help you feel safe <laughs> so that you can tackle this uh, amazing project. So you start out at the back, um, you knit the back panel up and then you go around um, and you knit towards the fronts, um, and then you pick up for the sleeves, I believe, um, and then you do the bottom border, and there's two options for the bottom border, uh, and then you can do the shawl collar, uh, and then you finish the whole thing off with an I-cord edge. Um, and I was really scared about the I-cord edge because I-cords really take me a very long time to knit out most of the time, but I actually timed myself um, this time and it only took about two and a half hours. So uh, do not be afraid. Um, and the I-cord edging really, uh, you know, even though it takes a while um, and it feels kind of like, oh, you're at the end of the project and you have to do this whole other thing. Um, it's really worth it because it gives the whole thing a really clean finish. Um, the other interesting thing about the construction of this garment is that uh, all of the sizes, all of the different sizes have the exact same stitch count and you just um, change the uh, size of the garment by changing the gauge and you change the gauge by working with different weights of yarn. So the small size starts with a fingering weight yarn and you match your uh, needle size to get the gauge that you need. Um, for that weight of yarn, um, and uh, Stephen has a chart in the pattern that tells you what kind of gauge you need to get to get the size that you want to get. Um, so for me, uh, personally, I uh, went for the medium size, which calls for DK weight yarn. I have some DK weight in here, but a lot of it is fingering held double. Some of it's sport weight, some of it is um, hand spun, which always turns out bulkier than I wanted to. Um, but it's okay because um, I'm playing with texture. <laughs> Um, so I ended up with a kind of 19 stitches per 4 inches um, kind of gauge, which is somewhere between the small and the medium. Um, and the needle size is going to be different for everyone to get that kind of gauge, but I used a US 8 um, 5 millimeter needles. Um, so just so you know how that's going to fit, I'm going to insert some footage of me uh, here standing up and modeling it for you. Um, just for reference, I'm five foot four. Um, my bust is 37 inches, usually. <laughs> Changes, as you know, uh, if you're a woman or whatever. Um, yeah. Uh, you'll see in the footage that there's two different ways to wear it. Um, you can wear it so that the this these color panels form vertical lines, or you can sort of wear it upside down. Um, so that the lines uh, are horizontal. Um, and if you wear it upside down, um, 
the, this shawl collar goes to the back and then um, the collar ends up becoming the bottom border. Um, yeah, so you can see that uh, right there. Um, I made some modifications. Uh, one of them was accidental. Here, uh, the shoulder seam here, um, which is the only part that you seam in the construction. Everything else you just pick up stitches to knit. Um, it's smaller than the pattern calls for, but that's because when I did the first side, um, you're supposed to start decreases here. And I started the decreases a couple of rows sooner than I was supposed to. Um, so to match that, I made the shoulder smaller. Um, and then I had to do the same thing on the other side because I wanted it to match. And um, I do wonder if it would sit a little bit more securely on my shoulders if I had knitted the way I was supposed to knit it. Um, but I kind of like the sort of drapey look with the smaller shoulders anyway, so it worked out. Um, and the other thing that I did was uh, I did fewer repeats than called for on the brioche border at the bottom. So uh, you don't have to do the two color brioche border at the bottom. Um, you can also just do a garter stitch. Um, but I just really like the way the brioche looked, so that's why I did the brioche. Um, and I did the I-cord bind off with the same color. I did the um, contrast color for the brioche. So there's a nice kind of um, symmetry there. Uh, the other thing I did was I also did fewer repeats for the collar. Um, this was mostly because I wanted the proportions to match a little bit, um, and since I did the uh, bottom border smaller, I thought it would look better if the collar was a little bit smaller as well. Um, and I really like the modifications that I made. I think it turned out really well. Um, yeah. Uh, so like I said before, I use mostly fingering weight held double. Um, some of it's a lighter fingering weight, um, so the fabric uh, changes throughout. Um, the way that I picked the yarn, basically, um, for the most part, when I started out with a project, I uh, pulled out all the scraps I had of fingering weight and DK, um, and I sort of put them together, see what looked good, pull some out. Um, I had some greens, for example, that wasn't the quite, I mean, I have some greens in here, but it wasn't quite the right shade of green, I felt, so I took those out. I put in some um, full skeins that I thought would tie everything together cohesively. Um, so most of this is uh, yarn that I had on hand. Um, some exceptions are uh, this beautiful, this, this bit here. <laughs> this is... Um, this is yarn I got at a trunk show uh, at Yarns Untangled, which is my local yarn shop in Kensington Market here in Toronto. Um, and uh, Dyer um, Stitch Noir Fiber Arts, she was having a trunk show and she's based out of Hamilton. And um, I went to pick up my um, fiber haul. I got, I, I got fiber because I've started spinning a little bit um, and I wanted Stitch Noir Fiber Arts fiber for a really long time, um, but I was just like dallying because of the shipping costs and because it felt silly, like Hamilton's an hour away, like I don't want to pay for shipping when I can just like jaunt over to Hamilton and pick it up. Not that I can in COVID times anyway, but Yarns Untangled was having a trunk show, so I was able to go pick up the fiber and then I saw this and as soon as I saw it, I knew it would be the sort of like missing oomph in the penguino, so I picked it up and I pretty much knit it in right away. Um, the fiber that I got, I also spun up a little bit of um, and put it in here. Um, I have this problem where I can't really uh, spin up large bits of fiber. I sort of spin, you know, 20 grams and then I get bored and want to spin something else or I want to ply to see how it's going to knit up. So this, this is about like 10 grams I think here. Um, so that's something I spun myself. It's also Stitch Noir Fiber Arts. Um, there's another strip of hand spun here, um, right here. Uh, again, same deal. I made it a little bit further. I think this is about 20 grams. <laughs> and then I was like, I want to knit it in now. So I did that. Um, this is from uh, Spindles and Stitches. Stitches and Spindles. Oh, I forget um, what the name of the company is. But yeah, it, it was it was a mystery bat that I got a while back, um, and I thought it looked really nice here. 
Um, I guess for other highlights, uh, it is kind of a lie to say that <laughs> it's, it's mostly made from stuff I had on hand that I just pulled together because I dyed uh, color specifically um, because I thought I needed something to tie everything in together again. Um, a couple of the yarns I used in this I actually dyed myself. Um, so this bright orange here uh, I dyed myself and to sort of calm down that orange a little bit uh, I dyed the, this is the i cord edging, um, I dyed this myself as well. Um, it's a little bit of pink and a little bit of yellow and a little bit of purple, sort of variegating. Um, and the other color that I dyed, um, you can see it here actually. It's also the main color on the back, but it's this blue. Um, yeah, so those are some yarn highlights. Uh, I will um, update my project page on that place that will not be mentioned. Um, in case anyone's interested with all the different yarns that I used, um, except for the hand dyed, obviously, because they're not repeatable. <laughs> they're just sort of happy accidents. Um, and, uh, uh, yeah, um, so if you uh, are interested in the different colors, um, I'll try to list all of them. Um, most of it's just hand dyed. Uh, indie dyed yarn scraps that I had from different projects. Um, I, yeah, I think this turned out, I, th I don't know, the colors, so the basic philosophy that I followed is, again, Stephen West's philosophy. Um, in one of his videos he says, if you want to make your West knits better than my West knits, just add more color. <laughs> so whenever I felt like it wasn't working out, I just added a crazier, differenter color. Um, and you know, there's some things I did to maintain like a kind of cohesion, which was to, you know, do the collar the same color as the brioche border down here. The other thing I did was um, I intended to make the sleeves the same color because I thought that would give it a nice symmetry, um, but I ran out of this yarn. The uh, Before worn, the sleeves take a lot more yarn than you think it would. Um, so I ran out of this yarn and I knew I wouldn't have enough, so I just uh, went with another neutral as well. I thought that would um, make it a little bit more wearable. Not that any Pangbono isn't wearable, I think, uh, even if your Pangbono is much crazier than mine. Um, if you want to wear it, you should wear it out and just uh, rock the world kind of thing. Um, but yeah, so I've had no problems wearing this out and just being a color fiend wherever I go. Um, and I think it helps that I pick the kind of smaller size. I know lots of people want to go really crazy and they um, do like the bulky weight size, uh, which I think makes it a little bit harder to wear out. Uh, I'm sure it makes it a lot more cozy, but um, it's, I mean, it's summer, it's just too hot for one thing. And it like makes the garment really heavy. Um, I do want to make a kind of bulky weight bathrobe thing um, for future times when I will be able to go to yarn festivals so that I can just like be wearing a gigantic penguino. Um, but that'll come later. Uh, so uh, yeah, that's all I want to say about the garments. Um, I did also want to showcase uh, how I plan on wearing it. Um, out because I do want to wear it out. I want the whole world to see this awesome garment. Um, so I put together a couple of outfits really quickly, just like um, stuff I wear on a regular basis, uh, depending on the season, and I just threw a penguin over top. Uh, so here are three outfits. I hope you enjoyed this video, and I hope it inspired you to knit your very own penguino. Remember, more penguino, more rock.